podcast time, baby. Featuring Sobia Akhtar. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. This is Michael Midnight with Mike Tech Studios. Today, we are continuing our topic on recruiting and trying to hire and find the right talents. So with us today, we're actually going to have Sobia Akhtar. She has a diverse background of IT and hiring management experience, has an MBA, started actually from Franklin University of Columbus, Ohio, finishing up in in Indoc College, majoring in project management, business analysis, data analysis. Sobia, how's it going? Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. How are you doing today? I know that right now in Boston, it's not the prettiest place to uh, be in weather-wise, but, uh, you know, there is sunshine out the window right here. It's probably a balmy 75 <laughs> degrees, but uh, I can't really complain right now, you know? You will be able to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of great things in Boston. I almost want to say Boston with uh, my, my <laughs> one of my favorite uh, comedians, Bill Burr, is always, he's, he's actually from Boston. Anyway. Carrying on, why don't you uh, give us a little intro about yourself, your background, and you know, just have some some of our listeners here get a better idea. Sure, uh, sure. My name is Sylvia. Originally, I was born in India, and I've been in the states for almost five years now. So I started my career in the IT department. Started working for a technology company right, right after I graduated. Was working there as an associate consultant for almost five years, and then decided to move on to my higher education. So when I I moved to the United States. My main goal was to get a master's degree. Graduated from Endicott College with my concentration being uh, project management, data analytics, a little bit of marketing and advertising as well. Um, as business analyst and sales intern when I was studying that time. And uh, right after when I graduated last year in May 2017, started working with Abercrombie and Fitch with assistant manager. So it's the responsibility of the manager and the assistant managers to hire their part-time associates, do everything in process and then onboard them. Um, I switched to another company, Crane & Lion, where I'm currently working right now. I've been doing their analyst role, but I have been also involved in recruiting and managing their stores as well. Nice. It's a lot. That's okay. That's okay. It just shows that you've been very busy and very active. What has been the biggest difference for you, you know, originally when you were working in India versus here? What's, what's the, is there a different approach when you are recruiting or hiring on talent? There is, uh, because I've already and only worked in technology department when I was in India. It's totally different than the United States in terms of the process and the streamlining of the process of the whole recruitment. So in India, it totally depends on how good your relationship is with the HR or like the person who is responsible for recruiting you. When I was there, I don't think the online application matters there in India. At all you know the population is a lot every single job that is being posted online you have a ton of candidates applying for it it goes mostly on the personal reference if you if you're able like if you're really smart and talented okay you have a sure shot but not everyone is like that a lot of people have to struggle a lot getting a job back there in India here on the other hand everything is very streamlined the bigger the organization is the more streamlined the process is the candidates know where they are where they and that they stand at that point of time. Whereas in India, if you're being interviewed for a position, you won't get a clarity on where you stand unless you are selected. Awesome. So it definitely sounds like there's much more of a better process or a proper process on this side mm-hmm. of the ocean, which, you know, you can understand. What is it that really fascinates you about the data and the marketing and the science behind what you do, like, for example, at Crane & Lion? I got into data analytics because of my personal interest. I was using Google Analytics to see what are the target audiences who are viewing my videos or, or my Instagram, where the majority of the views are coming from. And that whole part of the Google Analytics that it can present to you and how you can utilize it to target the audiences in that direction where you want to. It really fascinated me and that's what drives me to take one of my concentration in my MBA. There's something about data. As soon as you have data in your hand and you can see the calculation based on the data that you have, it gives you an answer to what, when, how. So that's what I'm doing at Crane & Line right now. What kind of people are coming into the store? 
what location or the segment they are coming in from, what product they are actually into. Absolutely. I think I touched on it in a previous podcast as well. Data is really becoming critical. I mean, you can actually dig down and get zip code counts. You can literally get a request of somebody in a zip code or group of zip codes. And I mean, you can really dig down deep and get demographics, psychographics based on customers, age, property, spending history, and really use a lot of that to get good data based on customers that purchase on a day-to-day basis to really target the audience that you are looking to sell to or prospect to. And really, essentially, that is where most of the bigger industry veterans, you know, and really having a good database and making sure that it is clean data, effectively doesn't have any duplications, any of the bad data is being pruned out. So shifting topics here and getting back into the retail sector of things, like for example, with Amicrabi and Fitch, what are some of the biggest challenges interviewing, training, and evaluating in in the retail sector? People think that because they're applying for a part-time job, they have the right to just cancel at the last moment when uh, the person has taken interview time slot out for you out of their schedule because they are working eight hours a day and it's difficult to maintain the store and to and to interview a person at the same time taking time out. What you're saying is is that it's not important for me to actually show up for my interview? Like I'm, I'm supposed to call you and cancel it? Is that what you're telling me? That's a no-no at the first place. We understand that and if you just want to say that, okay, like I don't think I'll be able to make it today, but you don't have a reason for that. I saw a lot of people asking for an interview time themselves and then canceling at the last time and asking to reschedule the interview at the last moment as well. I was doing that when I initially started working at Abraham and I thought, okay, I mean, that could be something that's going on with their life, so be understandable. But then I got to know that, okay, there is a problem. So just because it's a part-time role doesn't mean that we are not serious about it. Essentially, what you're telling me is call in, cancel at the last moment, and then don't give a reason why and expect to be surprised as to not hear back from you, right? Absolutely. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I can, I can definitely relate. I used to actually work retail myself way back in the day. And there was a funny story, which I'm sure if anybody who's listening and knows me from that time doesn't know this story up until now. So essentially speaking, you do what you need to do to get your job, especially when when you know that you're a good fit, sometimes you bend the rules. So at the time, I wasn't driving. This was one of my first jobs. And a good friend of mine actually got a interview with me for the company. And the company was Old Navy. I'm not going to you know, hide behind it or anything. He was working there for a while. And a couple of people who I went to school with, they were hiring people and they needed help. So they got me you know, in talking with one of the managers and they got me an interview. So for the first interview that I was there, I had no car. And to give you, to put this into perspective, it was an hour and 15 minute walk for me. So I worked at Old Navy after that for, you know, three years. So it wasn't like it was impossible. So anybody that I hear, you know, they don't want to walk across the street to go get something. I I have no sympathy for you at all. It was an hour and 15 minute walk. So I said, you know what? I want to make sure that I'm prepared. I'm not sweaty. I'm on time. I'm going to call a cab. Right, cab cost you fifteen dollars at the time. The cab ended up being late. I end up actually waiting over an hour for this cab to show up. So I get to my interview. I'm fifteen minutes late. So during the interview, obviously there's two people there. Amanda being one of the managers, and I don't remember the other guy's name. He wasn't there very long. And the response that they kept having, no matter how serious that they were trying to take it, was, "Yeah, but you were late to the interview. So how can we take you seriously?" So. Oh, come on. That's ridiculous. You cannot do that. That You showed up. You showed up on your interview. Even though you were 15 minutes late, you have a story that your cab came late. Things oh. happen and you have to be lenient uh, as, as long as the candidate candidate is showing up. To I me, <laughs> yeah, to me, what they were doing was, was totally wrong. Sure, I agree. But unfortunately, this is Old Navy. (laughs) So during the interview, you can kind of feel that uh, they were going to pass because they were doing it just begrudgingly because you were there and they were scheduled to do it, get you out of work. But lo and behold, you got the name of the manager. Manager's name was Carl. Old Navy at that time was a Target store. So what that means essentially is that store wasn't doing very well and there was a lot of LP issues and it was hemorrhaging money. So essentially I knew who to talk to and I knew names to throw around. 
So as I walked in, I think either later on that day or the next day, I walked in and said, yeah, I was just trying to see, I'm supposed to be talking to a Carl. And I go in and Carl went in and talked to me, liked me, whatever it was. And those initial managers or assistant managers, they didn't pass along the information. You know, as I'm talking with Carl, he goes, yeah, there's a, did they set you up for that interview for the onboarding uh, trainee program tomorrow? And I said, yes, they did. What time was that again? And he gave me the time. So I show up the next day with all my paperwork and whatever. Surprisingly, the same, you know, Amanda is there and she's like, I don't, I don't have, did Carl say? And I said, yeah, Carl said I was supposed to be here, at whatever, here's my information. She was confused. I got hired. <laughs> so you, you got to do what you got to do. I mean, again, I, I was there for three years. I had everything above target that you could ever ask for. The store since that, you know, since that time pulled from a target store to non-target. Uh, we were we were making a lot of the goals. It's a very difficult area to be making money from, especially in, in that mall that we were in. But essentially, you know, again, if I, if I didn't move forward and was just Again, using active listening skills, I would have not been able to have that position. But it wasn't like I wasn't qualified. You just had somebody who had a, unfortunately, uh, a bias against you. Now, were you late? Sure, but things do happen and it was a legitimate cause. When I say it's an hour and 15 minutes, that's an hour and 15 minutes. That's not an hour and 15 minutes when it's raining. That's almost uh, an hour and a half, an hour and 45. I walked out in the snow and that was two hours. I'd have to go in and change clothes and throw gel back in my hair. So when you talk about dedication and people actually showing up yeah <laughs> I don't want to hear yeah, I joined Crane and Lion I initially had to hire a lot of people they don't have their recruitment portal so I was throwing stuff out on Indeed just to make sure that the, the word is there that we are hiring and you won't believe how many people more than 100 people would have applied for the position I would sort candidate out based on their eligibility and knowledge and uh, matching skill set I literally wanted to give everyone a chance even though they their skill set was not matching because this was not a job that required some technical background. This was a job that could help anyone who was actually looking forward to work in a retail industry, who was interested in fashion and who had a passion to work. I would set up appointment to do the interview and I will tell you that out of the 50 interviews that I would have scheduled, only 10 people would have showed up despite the fact that they accepted the interview request. West. I would send them the time slot. If it didn't work for them, they would revert back to me that, hey, okay, one o'clock is not going to work for me. Can I do like 3 p.m.? And I would be fine with that. I would reschedule that. They decide not to show up without any text or without any email prior. So that was really disheartening. I remember working as a part-time associate myself. I was working at a hotel. I remember showing up. Uh, it was a part-time front desk agent role. I remember showing up 15 minutes ahead of the interview time. It was a very easy job. I used to take it so seriously that I have to be there before time so that the person who is working there before me can leave on time. So this is how we used to think. But I, I think that a lot of people don't think like that anymore. If I know that you're going to be, and it's all about first impressions, if I know that you're going to take me seriously as a company, I expect you to do some sort of research. I expect you to dress appropriately for the job that you're applying for. Not everything needs a suit and tie, but be presentable shower, preferably with soap, and <laughs> make it look like you're taking it seriously. So there was a post going on LinkedIn and somebody had this issue. The same thing that I am telling you that people won't show up for the interview, what should be done? And I just commented on that, like it's a problem of the younger generation that they just don't take things seriously. I had response on that comment more than the, the post itself had. People were so mad at me that I was dragging the younger generation in between when I myself was belonging to a younger generation as well. When I was growing up, the internet wasn't readily available on your phone. You literally have a device now that you can reach anybody that you want within reason at any time, day or night, and connect with them, whether it's for designing, collaboration, dating, business, trips. If you want to go and visit somewhere over in Australia, for example, you can actually FaceTime with somebody or video chat with somebody and see what it looks like over there. You can actually do all that literally. And this wasn't exactly a reality or possible to normal everyday people 10 years ago, especially to me. Yeah. And 
I mean, I'll go even further where there was people when I was working in Old Navy, there was a McDonald's that was literally in the parking lot and I would have people complain, hear them complain that they wouldn't want to walk across the parking lot. Across the parking lot. We're not talking across the river. This isn't Pocahontas. We're not talking about taking a, a field trip down to the East Coast or, or traveling internationally, going to the airport. We're talking just across, like literally a 30 second walk. And they complain about doing that. So I have no sympathy for people whatsoever. You know, it doesn't matter what the generation is. If you're handicapped or something like that, sure, you know, then you have all validity. But <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm so grateful that I have these people that I'm working with right now. Cannot be more grateful. They are young. They are very professional. I'm so happy that I hired them. Those are my good hires. So I would rather give it to them rather than have you no respect for the work that you are doing. If somebody is going to take it seriously, they'll definitely show it. And if not, hey, it's just sometimes it's just not the right fit. And that's also that's also okay as well. What's the strangest interview that you've had to date from any of the companies that you've worked with. Okay. This person who showed up on the interview thinking that person already had this thing in, in in their mind that because they showed up on the interview, they are already hired. You showed up. I'm going to interview you. And then I have other candidates as well that I have to interview and whoever will fit the position. And the candidate was, I mean, I felt bad telling the candidate all of these things. I never thought that a candidate would think like that, that just because they are showing up on the interview that mean that they're already hired so the candidate got really upset and it was, I felt really bad for them and I told them that I'm gonna give them a call by the end of this week and they could not believe the fact that I was telling this to them they were like are you not gonna call me on the weekend can I know if I'm already hired for the company or not, the, the person's communication skills are not that good. Majority of the work that we do, which is happening at the store, is communicating with the clients, communicating with the customers. Somehow, like you lack that skill, then it's really difficult for me to, to hire you because I would know that the communication is not going to be great. Well, usually I end up wrapping up the podcast with uh, one horror story and then one awesome recruiting or hiring story. So I think that's going to actually count for our horror story as it sounds what's a good you know share with us a story or an experience with a candidate that it ended up really awesome Sure. I was hiring for Train and Lion. The person that I'm talking about, her name is Sori Bell. If you're if you're listening, Sori Bell, I'm so grateful. She is, I think she is 19 right now. When I looked at her resume, she had really good experience. Called in, I called her in for an interview. And before her, all of the candidates were just not showing up for the interview. There was no intimation on that. They're not going to show up at all. This candidate being the manager, I had to reach out to her and tell her that her interview squad was not going to work out that time and she's going to have to come some other day. She immediately responded. I mean, she was the one person who was responding to my emails right away. If you're going to work with a person, it's very important for the candidate to understand that how important the communication is. She understood it and she responded to me. Fine, I, I will take the interview whenever you have time. I scheduled her for the other day and I was expecting that she's not going to show up but she showed up before time the interview went great she had really good experience she was a sweetheart she had so much positive energy around her when i told her that i'm gonna call her by the end of the week to tell her whether or not she is getting hired or not she told me that just the opportunity of her being there just to meet me was a very big thing for her it really melted my heart she had all the qualities she had all the skill set that was required for the job and on top of that she was really soft-hearted and really down to earth i i really wanted to tell her that you were already hired but I kept it to myself and then I hired her and she has been so far the best associate I've ever had. Though she is in her teenagers, she's gonna go really far because she is very professional. You can't get any better of that for a recommendation. You, yes. Sorry about if you're listening to this, use this in your resume. Tell them to reference this podcast and that Sobia is giving you a recommendation right here. You'll thank me later. Absolutely. Um, that's awesome. I wish there were better ways of really giving 
you know, recommendations and just letting people know that they're doing an awesome experience. You know, I just thought about this on the spot while you're you were telling me this. If Sorbel does listen to this or if somebody can get into contact with her and have her listen to this podcast, if she can reach out and just uh, reach out to me on social media or something like that with the hashtag awesome outcome. So A-W-E-S-O-M-E. O-U-T-C-O-M-E and just send it either go at miketech.tv or hit up uh, Mike Tech Studios on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. What I'll do is I'll actually send out a, a Mike Tech Studios mouse pad. It's that is so cute. It's just a really awesome thing to hear that, you know, it's just a small token that we can do here and, you know, just to say, hey, keep on doing what you're doing. You're going to be doing great and awesome things and you do have people that believe in and support you. So keep doing what you're doing because it's, it's definitely working out for you. I could not be more grateful and appreciative on the effort that you are taking to reach out to people like us and have our experiences noted down because it really mean a lot and and i'm I'm, uh, really happy to be a part of it absolutely i appreciate that i mean again i i do these because again i've been in the same whenever i talk about something i talk because i've been there I also have these very same conversations and these very same issues that we talk about on these podcasts. So they are, in a sense, almost personal to me as well. But I also know that there are other people that could be benefiting from this that wouldn't necessarily have to walk an hour 15 minutes uh, to their job. But, you know, also when you stand out, there's just been managers that I wish would have stepped up a little bit better in some of the work experiences that I've had and mentored me. And I probably maybe would have still been there with those companies. But you know what? Things work out for a reason. I'm sure Sorry Bell's definitely happy to have you as a manager. And you know, she's happy where she is now. It's obviously a good fit. So it's the least we can do. Maybe uh, maybe she'll inspire somebody else. Who knows? That's how it works, right? Yeah, it, it surely does. Sovia can be found on LinkedIn. She's also uh, very active on her Instagram account. You can follow her at Amazing Sovia. Sovia, appreciate you being on the uh, on the episode with us pleasure is all mine thank you so much michael appreciate it have your own recruiter candidate story that you want to share with us if you're listening on youtube comment below if you're listening on itunes google play soundcloud or your podcast app of choice feel free to email your experience to go at miketech.tv you can also find our full conversation of this episode on youtube at youtube.com forward slash mike tech studios that's m-i-k-t-e-k studios thanks for checking out this episode and feel free to like subscribe and share our content. And until next time, this is Michael Midnight signing off. Thanks again for checking in.